Hi all, in this video, we will see one of the design limitations within Power Automate when we are trying to get more than 10,000 items from a SharePoint list. When we use the get items action or the send HTTP request to SharePoint, by default, the returned items are limited to 100. We can increase the returned items in the get items action, specifying the top count value and setting it to 5000. And any value beyond 5000 will still fetch you only 5000 items because it's a design limitation at the SharePoint side. Same way, in case you are using send HTTP request to SharePoint action, we can use a dollar top is equal to 5000 or data parameter in the URI where, so that it can get max of 5000 items. And uh, even if we change the dollar top to something beyond 5000, we will still get uh, 5000 items. So what do we do in, in case we need to get more than 5000 items from SharePoint list uh, and process it within Power Automate? This is an inherent design limitation that dates back to older SharePoint versions as well, which is put in place to ensure that the backend SQL server does not get throttled. In this video, we will see how to work around the design limitation using a do until loop, for which we have created in the backend a list with 10,000 items, and we will try to fetch all the 10,000 items inside Power Automate. So if you actually go look at the list settings, we can see that it has 10,000 items which has crossed the list view threshold. So let's head to Power Automate and create an instant flow which will be manually triggered and we will add three variables because we will be using them throughout the flow to control the flow. Uh, the first variable we will name it as var list items array and we will be using this as an array variable that will act as the master array of all the items retrieved from SharePoint. Then we will use another variable which is going to be an integer variable that is used to store the item ID of the last item of a specific batch. We will set its initial value as uh, an integer uh, of zero. Finally, let's add another variable which is going to be a boolean variable that is used as a basically a condition variable to exit the do while loop when the count of items returned from SharePoint is zero. So we will set its initial value as false. And the moment it becomes true, we will exit the loop. Now let's add a do until loop because we would need a loop to loop through the SharePoint uh, list items. The do until loop will exit when the where each return item collection is empty is equal to true. So we'll add it to the parameter that has to be checked against the true value. So the idea here is to loop and use the get items action to get batches of 5,000 list items. So in two iterations, we will be able to fetch 10,000 items. In the third iteration, the return collection will be empty. And this means we will be setting the various return items to true within the loop. So once the third loop starts, it will actually uh, evaluate to true which will exit the loop because we have already returned all the 10,000 items and there is no more items return to be returned from SharePoint. Now we will add the get items action which is used to get the items from the SharePoint list. We will mention the site address as well as the list from which we are getting the items which is the 10,000 records list. And we will also create a filter query so that it returns only the required items. We will mention the top count as 5,000 so that in the First iteration, it will return items with ID 0 to 5000. Now, to ensure that the second iteration fetches the IDs 5000 to 10,000, we will be storing the ID of the last item in the current batch in the variable var last item ID in one of the steps down the line. And we will specify the auditor filter query ID greater than var list item ID. So, this way, in the second iteration, the items that are being returned will have ID greater than the last item's ID of the previous batch. So we'll add a filter query and we'll add the IDs greater than var last item ID. So this way we've set up the get items action. So as to store the returned items inside the array, we will format the item collection using a select action and use the value output from the get items action to map the fields and values. So first let's add the value and now we will do the mapping as employee ID will be a title. We will have the first name as the first name, which is returned from the SharePoint list. 
then we will have the last name which again can be got from the sharepoint list and we'll have the gender and also let's add the email right now this way we have uh, added the select action to do the mapping so that we just retrieve the only the needed items to the final array where we are going to combine the entire 10,000 items next we will add a compose action to append the output of the map fields and values from the current action that is the select action uh, to the array that is used to hold the list items uh, this will after every loop the array will get appended with a batch of 5000 items so let's add the compose action so you can see that we are using an expression union to combine the existing var list items array which is the master list items array with the recently created uh, array which we have got from get items action which again we have filtered or mapped using the select action now again let's add a set variable action um, which will be used to append back the union array back to the master list array so that we will have the master list populated with the arrays that we have uh, union together next we add a condition check to see if the returned items collection is empty based on which we will assign appropriate values that will control the next iteration so let's add a condition check and we will add an expression to check if the returned item is empty now we have added the empty expression and we will check if the returned value from the get items action is empty which indicates an empty sharepoint list item collection and we will evaluate it to in another expression which is true so here um, what we will be doing is like we are evaluating a condition check to see if the returned items from sharepoint list is empty or not and if it is empty which means it evaluates to true we will set the variable where is written item collection empty as true so that we can use this to exit the do while loop and if the return collection is not empty then we need to actually ensure that uh, in the next iteration we are fetching the item collection where the item id is greater than the id of the last retrieved item in the current batch for which we will add the set variable action and we will set the var list item id as the id of the last item in the current collection so we will get the dynamic content value so that the last of the current value dot id will indicate the id of the last item in the current batch and we will set that items id to the var last item id finally we will create a json and we will be creating the json outside the loop using a create file action uh, which will create a json in the one drive so we will create a file in the root folder and we will name it as employee records dot json and as the file content we will ensure that we are trying to add the base64 converted content for which we will use the expression base64 and add the var list items array as the input to the base64 function so we will just go to dynamic content so this way we have added the expression which will convert the var list items array into base64 format so this completes the creation of the power automate that retrieves 10,000 items from SharePoint list. Yes, let's go ahead and save it. And once it is saved, we will manually trigger the flow to test out the flow in action. So we'll now round the flow. So we can see that now the do while is still running which is now executing in batches by getting 5000 items each from the sharepoint list so we can see that now the flow has completed successfully let's head over to our one drive where we have hosted the employee records.json we can see that in the one drive it has returned the entire records and as you can see like the last records id is 10000 which indicates that the entire 10000 item from sharepoint list has been pulled by power automate in multiple batches of 5000 
which is basically in two batches of 5000 and have written it directly to one drive file so this way we can work around the design limitation of fetching more than 5000 items from sharepoint list using power automate so that we can get the entire batch of items uh, how much of items you have in sharepoint it can be picked in batches and uh, processed within power automate so we will see more of such design limitation workarounds in our upcoming videos. Thank you for watching and uh, see you soon in another video.